Risk is a fairly simple game to learn. There are some complex elements though, so I'm going to talk you through the gameplay step by step. It's well worth the effort to learn, as Risk is a very enjoyable game with loads of replay value. Part 1. Setup. Nominate a banker to be in charge of dishing out reinforcements and risk cards and collecting in casualties. This helps the game to run more smoothly. Each player chooses a colour. The number of players determines how many armies you get at the start. The maximum is 40 armies for 2 players and the minimum is 20 armies when you have as many as 6 players. We recommend you only distribute single armies, the soldier pieces, rather than units of 5, the horses, or 10, the cannons, otherwise you will be spending a lot of time making change in the early part of the game. Remove the jokers from the pack of country cards. There are 42 territories on the risk board, and one card for each in the pack. Shuffle the cards and deal them out, face down, as equally as possible. Unless exactly two or three people are playing, there will not be an equal number of cards dealt to each player. Now, all the players look at their cards and place one army on each territory. This allows all the players to examine the geographical and territorial advantages and disadvantages. Once everybody has placed one piece on each territory, the banker collects together all the cards, replaces the jokers randomly in the pack and shuffles the entire deck. Each player rolls all five dice and the highest score will go first. The person who threw highest places just one reinforcement on any one territory. Play now moves clockwise, with each player placing just one piece each time until everybody's reinforcements have been deployed. Taking turns means you don't allow an advantage where one player waits until everyone else has made their move before placing his or her pieces. If you are playing with 4, 5 or 6 players, or somebody wasn't paying attention properly and missed a round or two, there will be players with extra pieces at the end of this deployment phase. This is normal, just keep moving anti-clockwise with whoever has pieces left until they are all deployed. Pass the red attacking dice to the first player, and leave the blue defensive dice on top of the pile of cards. Congratulations, you've successfully set up your risk game. Part 2. Gameplay. The first player should already have the red dice, but before they begin their attack phase they receive reinforcements from the banker. Here's how you calculate reinforcements. Count the number of territories you have and divide by 3. Add any bonuses for entire continents being held. Add any bonuses for cashing in a set of risk cards and bear in mind the minimum number of reinforcements is 3 regardless of how bad your situation is. All reinforcements must be placed on the board before the players begin their attack rolls. Now the attacker must choose whether or not to make an attack. It is not compulsory to attack, you may simply reinforce and then pass the dice. However most players will make at least one attack per turn. It's strategically important to keep moving otherwise you will not claim risk cards and will miss out on cashing in sets later. The attacker names the territory they wish to attack and the territory from which the attack will occur. An example is Alaska to Kamchatka. The attacker may use a maximum of all three red dice. As long as there are four or more armies on the territory that plans the attack, the attacker can utilize all three of the dice. However, if there are less than four armies on the attacking territory, the attacker may only use one dice less than the total. The defender has the option to throw two dice or just one die. They must announce their intention to throw one die before the attacker throws. This avoids cheating when a very unfavorable or favorable attack throw is made. Again, this option is limited to when there are three or more defending armies. If the defender has two armies or less, then they may only throw one die. Resolving combat in Risk is very simple when you know how. 
Just remember that you always select the best two out of three attacking dice when all three dice are thrown, and that the defenders always win on a tie. In this example, the red 6 beats the blue 5, while the blue 4 ties with the red 4. Defenders always win on a tie, so the banker removes one army from each side. After each round, the attacker chooses whether to continue with the assault or break it off. There's no obligation to fight to the death. The defender has no choice though. They must continue to defend themselves until the attacker calls off the fight. There is no rule preventing the attacker from resuming the same fight later in the turn. As long as the attacker captures one new territory during their turn, they're awarded a risk card by the banker when they pass the dice clockwise to the next player. Risk cards are kept to build sets of three, as I'll explain in a moment. Play continues with each person taking a turn attacking, with the dice moving clockwise around the table. Part 3. Special Events There are special events in Risk which we'll cover now. Capturing a continent means owning every single territory within it. Should a player successfully capture a continent on their turn and defend its borders until the next turn, then they receive a reinforcement bonus at the beginning of their turn depending on the size of the continent. Australasia or South America are worth two bonus armies. Africa is worth three bonus armies. North America or Europe are worth 5 bonus armies, and Asia is worth 7 bonus armies. A set of risk cards is formed when a player has either 3 of a kind, or 1 of each kind, of the symbols on the card. The value of the set is dependent upon the symbols used to form the set. 3 soldiers are worth 4 bonus armies, 3 horses are worth 6 bonus armies, 3 cannons are worth 8 bonus armies, and 1 of each is 10 bonus armies. Joker cards may count as any of the symbols and help to form any of the sets. The rule for handing in sets is simple. You must hand in a set at the beginning of your turn, not in the middle. Any time a player has accumulated five risk cards, they must hand in a set, no matter how feeble it is. A player has the right to ask any other player how many risk cards they have. The player must respond honestly. The final special rule is when a player is eliminated from the game. Any risk cards the dead player is holding must be handed to the attacker who wiped them out. The attacker still has to wait until their next turn before handing in any sets, but this is one time when it's legal to hold more than five cards. An attacker who eliminates another player from the game still receives an extra risk card at the end of their turn as usual. When it's their next turn, they may hand in as many sets of risk cards as required to bring them below five cards in their hand. When a player eliminates all the other players, or the players agree that one player is certain to win and then resign, the game is over.